we will now proceed to our regular meeting of discussion. Okay? Now, since we have, we are done with the different classification of crimes, we will now proceed with what are the different schools of thoughts in criminology. So, for sure, ito may, may encounter nyo rin ito sa mga succeeding semesters pa or sa mga ibang subjects nyo pa na pagdadaanan nyo rin itong mga subjects or topic na ito. So, let's start first with in the 18th century, criminological literature, whether a psychological, sociological, or psychiatric invent has traditionally been divided into four broad schools of thought about the causes of crime. Ngayon, babalikan natin. Bakit na natin pag-uusapan itong schools of thought? Babalikan natin ngayon yung definition ng criminology. Diba sabi natin, criminology is scientific study of, or body of knowledge which talks about or regarding crimes and criminals. Now, let's talk about ano yung mga possible cause? Ano yung dahilan? Bakit nagkakaroon ng crime? Or bakit ba yung tao nakakapag-commit ng crime? So, we have the classical school of thought, the classical school of thought, the positivist, and the Chicago schools of criminology. So, himay-himayin natin ano ibig sabihin ng apat na yun. The classical school of thought or the classical school of criminology meaning it is a broad label for a group of thinkers of crime and punishment in the 18th and early 19th century. Its most prominent members, okay, sino daw ang, ang author or founder ng classical? So we have Cesar Bicariga and Jeremy Bentham. They share that the idea of criminal behavior could be understood and controlled as an outcome of a human nature. Nasa tao talaga yun. Shared by all of us. Human beings were believed to be hedonistic, acting in terms of their own self-interest, but rational, capable of considering which course of action was really in their self-interest. Meaning daw, ang sinasabi sa classical school of thought in criminology, which was founded by Cesar Vicaria and Jeremy Bentham, na ang pagiging kriminal or a person who committed a crime is nasa nature or nasa tao na talaga yun. Ibig sabihin, rationally na pag-iisipan. Bakit ba may mga tao na nagpa-plan, nag-iisip nag, nag sila ng diskarte, ng strategy on how are they going to commit certain crimes? So meaning, isa sa mga highlights sa classical school of thought um, founded by Bicari and Bentham, ang pagiging kriminal ay nasa nature na talaga ng tao. Classical school of thought in criminology, a well-ordered state, therefore, would construct laws and punishments in such a way that people would understand peaceful and non-criminal actions to be in their self-interest through strategies of punishment based on deterrence. Ibig sabihin, the classical school of thought was developed kasi nga, meron tayong tao na nagkocommit ng crime and there is also an equivalent of punishment para magkaroon ng deterrence dun sa mga ibang tao na nakakakita or nakaka-witness na, ah, okay, pag nagkocommit ako ng crime, that will be the same punishment will be inflicted sa akin. Deterrence meaning, nagkukos ito ng hindrance or, or threat or alarm or warning sa mga tao na they will not do the same action. Cesar Vicaria and Jeremy Bentham who propose utilitarian hedonism, which means it explains that a person always act in such a way as to seek pleasure and avoid pain became the main advocate of the classical school of criminology. Ngayon, pag sinabi natin classical school, para mas mabilis natin siyang maintindihan or para magkaroon tayo ng ng key point, ano yung mga keyword na pwede nating tandaan pag narinig natin sa classical school. Classical school meaning, ito daw yung pagbabalanse or nagdodominate si pleasure over pain. Kasi tayong mga tao, we are advocates or we are a fanatic of having or obtaining pleasure rather than pain. Another one, this was proposed again by Bicaria and Bentham. Next one, in his essay on crimes and punishment, the title of the book was Crimes and Punishment. This was written by Cesar Bicaria. 
which he presented as key ideas on the abolition of torture as a legitimate means of extracting confessions. So, way, way back 18th to 19th century, nag exist na yung torture before that. Pero dahil nga sa idea ni Cesar Vicaria, ang gusto niya mangyari, tanggal na yung torture as a way of extracting, or ito yung ginagamit kasi para mag-confess ng isang tao. This book founded the classical theory of criminology which maintains that man is essentially a moral creature with absolute free will to choose between good and evil. Therefore, there is a place upon the criminal himself that every man is responsible for his act. So, dito sa tinatawag natin classical school of thought, bukod sa tinatawag natin siyang pleasure and pain, it is somehow also known as the human free will. Kasi dito daw sa classical, according to Beccaria and Bentham, people used to or they commit crime kasi gusto nila. Yun yung will nila, yun yung desire nila. Kaya sila nagko-commit ng crime. Kasi alam naman daw ng tao kung ano yung tama at mali. Ngayon, kahit alam mo ang mali, ginagawa pa din natin. So, yun yung kanilang konsepto. Next, free will, according to Victoria, a philosophy advocating punishment severe enough for people to choose to avoid criminal acts. So, yung sabihin, kapag mas serious or pag mas matindi yung, yung punishment, Therefore, nagkakaroon ng deterrence. Mamimili ang tao. Okay, ay, 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 gagawin ko ba yung tama? Okay? Or gagawin ko yung mali kahit na mapaparusahan ako? According naman kay Bentham, the, the word hedonism or utilitarian hedonism kanina, this is the belief that people choose pleasure and avoid pain. Ngayon, para mas, mas, mas magkaroon tayo ng keyword, Vicaria is the one who, who highlighted the word free will and Bentham um, focuses on the word hedonism, the pleasure and pain. But still, this is under the classical school of thought. Sa madaling salita, sa classical school of thought, people commit crimes because of their free will. Okay? Kasi nga, mas gusto daw ng tao yung pleasure, yung mas madali, mas magaan, kaysa sa paghihira. Okay, then second school of thought is the neoclassical. The criticisms against the classical school led to the foundation of the neoclassical school of criminology. Ibig sabihin, sa si neoclassical na buo siya kasi they want to contradict the purpose or the idea of the classical school of thought. Under the neoclassical doctrine, there are situations or circumstances that made it impossible to exercise free will. Ibig sabihin daw, hindi naman daw lahat ng tao nakakapag-exercise ng free will rationally. Our reasons to exempt the accused from conviction. The classicists maintain that humans are totally responsible for their actions. The neoclassicists said not always. They argued that free will can be mitigated by pathology, incompetence, and mental disorder. So again, sa neoclassical kasi, pinag-uusapan natin, yes, okay, kahit pa paano, nag-aagree sila sa idea ni classical na, okay, may free will, but not of the people daw na nagko-commit ng crime are practicing their rational ideas or nagkakaroon ng tamang pag-iisip kasi meron naman daw mga exemption for that may mga tao na nakakapag-commit ng crime but they are under um, the influence or meron silang mga problema sa pag-iisip so ang, ang ina-identify dito is yung mga may mga mental disorder or merong mga diferensya sa pag -iisip. The neoclassical school does not represent any break with the classical view of human nature. It merely challenges the classical position of absolute free will. Because of this, it led also the position that while the classical doctrine is correct in general, it should be modified in certain details. So, ito yung sinasabi natin. Tama naman daw ang, ang classical. Okay? Tama naman daw sa ganong konsepto. Pero, there should be exemption to that. Okay? Kasi, kahit naman bata, matanda, babae, lalaki, we have our free will. But the question is, napag-iisipan bang mabuti? Or nasa position ba yung tao na makapag-decide kung anong tama at mali kung siya ay nasa kasalukuyan or meron siyang depekto sa pag-iisip? Okay? So, ano daw yung mga exemption? 
children and lunatics should not be regarded as criminals and free from punishment. So again, yung mga bata daw, tsaka merong mga mental disorder should be exempted. Hindi daw dapat sila magkaroon ng criminal liability. Kasi nga, bata sila at the same time, wala sila sa tamang pag-iisip. Now, in reality, sa present natin ngayon, ito yung mga kadalasang example nito is, what if ang bata, okay, nanakit ang bata or merong sinuntok ang bata tapos nag-collapse? Or di kaya merong binato yung bata ng, ng stone, na bukol, or di kaya nagsugat? Ano ang nagiging liability ng guardian or ng magulang? Diba? Hindi naman yung bata ang nag, nag sumasagot na expenses, kundi yung guardian or yung magulang no bata because of this idea. Second, it must take into account certain mitigating circumstances. Ano yung mitigating? Ibig sabihin daw, nalilis or nababawasan. Okay? Now, let's proceed with the positivist. The school that composed of Italians who agreed that in the study of crime, the emphasis should be on a scientific treatment of the criminal, not on the penalties to be imposed after conviction. It maintained that crimes or any other act is a natural phenomenon and is comparable to disaster or calamity. That crime as a social and moral phenomenon which cannot be treated and checked by the imposition of punishment but rather rehabilitation or the enforcement of individual measures. So, ito naman sa positivist, ang pinaglalaban naman dito, dapat yung tao daw na nakapag-commit ng crime, hindi siya pinapunish ng severe. Because their idea is, kailangan kung ang tao nakapag-commit ng crime, they should, they should be treated. Tinutulungan daw dapat sila na gumaling. Kasi kinukonsider daw sa positivist or Italian school of thought na ang tao ay mayroong karamdaman because he committed a crime or he is sick or he is under the influence of negative vibes kaya siya nag-commit ng crime. Then therefore, kailangan niyang ma-treat or ma-reha Okay, the positive school of criminology rejected the classical school's idea that all crime resulted from a choice that could potentially be made anyone. Though, they did not disagree with the classical school that most crime could be explained through human nature. They argued that the most serious crimes were committed by individuals who were primitive or atavistic. That is so failed to evolve to a fully human and civilized state. So, ito na. Si classical, okay, they're talk, they talk about the human free will, the, the um, utilitarian hedonistic. Pagdating naman sa neoclassical, at some point, kinokontradict nila or meron silang argument din regarding kay classical. Now, this time, sa positivist naman, meron din ganon. Meron silang kinokontradict or meron silang argument between the ideas. Ngayon, ang sinasabi nila is, okay, Pasok naman daw, pwede naman daw sabihin that a person or a criminal can be a criminal or committed a crime because of nature nga naman ng tao. Because kung kunwari, we want to protect ourselves, then nakikipag-away tayo or na napupunta sa danger yung buhay ng isang tao kung nagkukos naman siya ng danger sa isa. So kung kunwari, you are attacked by a person or anyone, it parang ang thinking doon, karapatan mo na ipagtanggol yung iyong sarili. But this time, according sa positivist, yung tinatawag nating serious crimes were committed by individuals or primitive or atavistic. That is who failed to evolve to a fully human and civilized state. Crime, therefore, resulted not from what criminals had in common with others in society, but from their distinctive physical or mental defects. So, ito naman, sa sinasabi naman dito sa positivist, Ang tao daw nagko-commit ng crime because, or ang, ang basihan daw ng tao nagko-commit ng crime is because of their physical appearance or yung mga depekto sa physical appearance ng inyong tao or yung mga mental defects. So, ibig sabihin, basis daw natin na kung ang tao ay magko-commit ng crime is base sa kanyang panlabas na anyo or sa kanyang um, mentality or nature or paano ba yung, yung kanyang quality ng kanyang pag-iisip. Okay. The positivists understood themselves as scientists, while the classical thinkers were concerned with legal form. 
constructing an environment in which crime was seen to be not in an individual self-interest, the positivists were concerned with scientifically isolating and identify, identifying the determining causes of criminal behavior in individual offenders. So, ito na yung nagkakaroon na ng argument between the three schools of thought. According to Cesar Lombroso, who is the founder of the positivists, and his two students, Denerico Ferry and Rafael Garofalo, were the primary personalities in the schools of thought. So, ibig sabihin, si Lombroso, Ferry, and Garofalo, sila yung founder ng positivists, or sila yung tinatawag na Holy Three. Okay? Kanina kasi, si Cesar Vicaria yung sa classical school of thought. Okay. Cesar Lombroso, the Italian leader of the positivist school of criminology, was criticized for his methodology and his attention to the biological characteristics. Biological meaning, ibig sabihin, the way the, the child or the person was developed. Okay? Bio. Okay? That his emphasis on the need to study offenders scientifically earned him as the father of modern criminology. So because of his idea, Cesar Lombroso was now known as the father of modern criminology. His major contribution is the development of a scientific approach to the study of criminal behavior and to reform the criminal law. He wrote the essay entitled Crime, okay, Crime, bisabingin, the action that is violation, its causes and remedies. Ano yung dahilan? At paano natin matutulungan? Or paano maiiwasan? That contains his key ideas and the classification of criminals. Okay? So ngayon, para magkaroon kayo ng deep understanding, ano pa pinagkaiba ng tatlo? Si classical kasi, ang pinag-uusapan or ang pinakamabigat na 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 pinag-uusapan sa classical is the, the people. Okay? Yung tao mismo. Bakit siya nagko-commit ng crime? Kasi nga pinag-uusapan natin dito, parte na siya ng nature ng tao, free will. Ang sabi naman sa neoclassical, yung mga lunatics, mga bata, they should be exempted. Okay? Sa positivist naman, ang, ang pinaka-point naman dito is the crime, not the person itself. Yung crime, ano yung ginawa niya? Ano yung, ano yung basihan para masabi natin that he committed crime? That contains his key ideas and the classification of criminals. Ngayon, de, de, ito, na yung, ito na yung contribution ni Cesar Lombroso. Wherein, they develop, ano daw ibig sabihin ng salitang born criminals? Kasi diba, balikan natin. It is to biological. Okay? Born criminals, there are born criminals according to Lombroso, the belief that being criminal behavior is inherited. So, ito na, dito na pumapasok ulit yung idea about um, the family of other Jukes, the Kalikak family, na kung saan, based on study, kung sino da yung kanilang um, ninuno. Kung ang ninuno daw nila ay criminal, or the, if they committed a crime, most likely, or almost, of their blood-related, the ascendants and descendants, ay criminal din. So, ibig sabihin, kung ikaw ay pinanganak o nanggalin sa isang pamilya na na kriminal, most likely lahat ng mga apo sa tuhod, apo, pamangkin ay magiging kriminal din because of this what we call inherited na mamana. Next, the criminal by fashion are individuals who are easily influenced by great emotions like fit of anger. Okay? So, ibig sabihin ang pinag-usapan natin dito, what makes a person, ha? becomes a criminal or ano daw yung mga possible reasons bakit ang tao nakakapag-commit ng crime. Now, dito sa pangalawa, criminal by passion, kasi ito yung mga tao daw na nagiging criminal or they committed crime because they cannot control their emotion. Next, number three, insane criminals are those who commit crime due to abnormalities or psychological disorders. Okay, psychologically, meron silang detekto. They should be exempted from criminal liability. Ma'am, tanong, nag exist ba siya ngayon? Yes. Kasi ito yung mga under sa jamaan natin sa criminal law, sa revised penal code natin. Meron certain article sa revised penal code natin kung ano yung mga criteria ng exempted sa criminal liability. Pag sinabi natin exempted, wala silang pananagutan. They are free from criminal liability. Okay? Sabi-sabihin, sa madaling salita, if it was 
or if it is proven to the court or in the court, pwede silang hindi makulong. Okay? Number four, what we call criminaloid, a person who commits crime due to less physical stamina or self-control. So, less physical stamina. Ibig sabihin, yun yung may mga tao agresibo or merong mga tao na natitrigger ka agad kasi nga wala silang control sa sarili. Last number five, occasional criminal are those who commit crime due to significant reasons that push them to do at a given occasion. So, yun yung mga napoprovoke. Okay? Kunwari, may mga inuman, merong mga party-party, tapos you were provoked by someone, nagiging criminal ka on that certain occasion because of the situation. Number six, the pseudo-criminals are those who kill in self-defense. Yung mga nakakapatay or nakakamit ng crime because they are defending their selves. Okay? From, from attack of others, from from danger caused by someone else. Okay? Enrico Ferri, 1856-1929, to 1929, he was the best known Lombrosis associate, parliamentarian, accomplished public lecturer, brilliant lawyer, editor, and scholar. Although he agreed with Lombrosis on the biological basis of criminal behavior, his interest in socialism led him to recognize the importance of social, economic, and political determinants. Okay? So, ito yung isa sa mga kasama ni Lombroso dun sa kanyang, kanilang idea about the positivist. Okay? His greatest contribution was his attack on the classical doctrine of free will. So, di ba ako sabi natin kanina, they are the one also, or the, the positivist school of thought in criminology somehow argues the content or the, con the, the concept of the classical school of thought, which argued that criminals should be held morally responsible for their crimes because they must have made a rational decision to commit the crime. Kasi nga, kinasabi sa free will, nasa tamang pag-iisip ang tao, kasi alam niya naman ang tama at mali, pero still, he or she chooses to commit crime. Pero dito, according to Enrico Ferri, dapat daw, magkaroon ng obligasyon or liability ang isang tao if he committed a crime. He believed that criminals could not be held morally responsible for their crimes because they did not choose to commit crimes but rather were driven to commit them by conditions in their lives. He also claimed that strict adherence to preventive measures based on scientific method would eventually reduce crime and allow people to live together in society with less dependence on penal systems. Okay? Next, so ito yung sinasama natin kasama nila in Rico Ferri and Cesar Lombroso, si Rafael Garofalo. Another follower of Lombroso, an Italian nobleman, magistrate, senator, and professor of law, like Lombroso and Ferri, he rejected the doctrine of free will and supported the position that only way to understand crime was to study it by scientific method. Influence on Lombroso's theory of atavistic stigmata, man's inferior animalistic behavior, he traced the roots of criminal behavior not to physical features but to their psychological equivalents, which he called moral anomalies. Okay? Ibig sabihin daw, dito sa pag-aaral ni Garofalo, Enrico Ferri, and Cesar Lombroso, isa lang ang pinaka-point dito na they, they contradict or they argue the idea or the concept of Cesar Vicaria's classical school of thought. Okay? According to his theory, natural crimes are found in all human societies regardless of the views of the lawmakers and no civilized society can afford to disregard them. Natural crimes, according to Garofalo, are those that offend the basic moral Sentiments of probity, respect for property of others, and pity revulsion against the infliction of suffering on others. So, again, sa idea ng, ng positivist developed by Garofalo, Enrico Ferri, and Cesar Lombroso, they are focusing on the crime. Okay? Ano da yung cause? Ano da yung dahilan? Ano da yung mga contributory factors that people commit crimes? Okay. So, ito naman yung classification ni Garofalo. Kanina, according kay, kay Lombroso, merong criminaloids, merong criminal by passion, merong occasional criminal. 
Um, dito naman kay Garofalo, he identified the different types of criminals. Number one, murderers. Those who are satisfied from vengeance and revenge. Yung paghigante. Violent criminals, those who commit very serious crime. Okay? So, yun yung kategory nga. Deficient criminals, those who commit crime against property. Yung mga naninira ng property, um, nagnanakaw. Lascivious criminals, those who commit crimes against chastity. So, ito yung classification niya. Okay? Other advocates of positivist criminology, okay, si Gabriel Tarde, he formulated one of the earliest sociological theories of criminal behavior who served 15 years as provincial judge and then placed in charge of France's national statistics. He rejected the Lombrosorian theory of biological abnormality, which was popular in his time, arguing that criminals were normal people who learned crime just as others learn legitimate trades. He formulated his theory in terms of laws of imitation, principles that govern the process by which people became criminals. So, kung matatandaan ninyo yung discussion natin about the criminological classification of crimes, na nabanggit na natin kanina about yung sa situational crime, yung crime by imitation, crime by passion, na kung saan daw, dito sa positivist, found according to Gabriel Tarde, ang tao, kapag narinig nila na yung Okay, someone or si A nag-commit ng crime, may meron siyang pinatay, meron siyang sinaksak. May mga tao daw na used to imitate the same crime or ginagaya yung ganung klase ng crime. Okay, si Emil Durkheim, he advocated the anomie theory, the theory that focused on the sociological point of the positive school which explains that the absence of norms in a society provides a setting conductive to crimes and other social Anti or antisocial acts. According to him, the explanation of human conduct lies not in the individual but in the group and the social organization. So, ang pinaglalaban naman ni Emil Durkheim is yung tinatawag nating anomie theory or the social norms. Dapat daw kasi yung isang lipunan or isang grupo ng community, they should have standards. Ano yung kanilang alituntunin? Ano yung kanilang standard way of living? So, yun yung pinaglalaban na Kung wala daw ganung klase ng guidelines or or basis ang, ang isang klase ng community magiging magulo daw talaga. So dapat merong alituntunin na dapat sundin ang mga tao within that certain community para hindi daw magkaroon ng kago luhan. Okay, the Chicago School. The Chicago School arose in the early 20th century through the work of Robert Ezra Park. Ernest Burgess, and other urban sociologists at the University of Chicago. In the 1920s, Park and Burgess identified five concentric zones that often exist as cities grow, including the zone in transition, which was identified as most volatile and subject to disorder. In the 1940s, Henry McKay and Clifford R. Shaw focused on juvenile delinquents, finding that they were concentrated in the zone of transition. Now, ano ba ibig sabihin ng transition? Transition from juvenile delinquent, pag hindi natin na-attend, pag hindi natin naagapan, itong mga juvenile na to will add or will be added, madadagdag sila doon sa mga present criminal. Okay? I don't know kung nagigets niyo yung idea na, kunwari bata siya, nag-commit siya ng crime, nagnakaw na siya. Pag hindi siya na-treat, pag hindi siya na na treatment or na rehabilitate na bata pa lang siya na alamin niya na dapat nung mali at hindi. Pag hindi siya na treat or hindi siya natulungan, dadagdag lang siya sa numbers of adults or criminals. So yun yung point, bakit ba nagkakaroon ng ng leniency or bakit ba iba ang detention facilities ng mga juvenile delinquent. Okay? Okay, the crime Theories. Ano daw yung mga teorya? Ano daw yung mga haka-haka na pinag-uusapan or nagiging basis if the child is a criminal? Or ano daw yung mga basis na ito, mag, ito yung dahilan bakit ang bata naging criminal or ang tao ay naging criminal because of this theory? Now, what is theory first? A theory is in any system of ideas arranged in rational order that produce general principles which increase 
our understanding and explanation. Rational, ibig sabihin na pag-isipan, tinanggap ng mga tao. Okay? The general principles in a theory are derived from and representative of particular facts, but those principles are not dependent upon the particular thing to be explained. The function of theory is to provide puzzles for research. Okay. What are the crime theories? To understand criminal justice, it is necessary to understand crime. Dapat alam talaga natin ano ibig sabihin ng salitang crime. Na kung mababalikan ulit natin, diba, crime is an act or omission. Ba? Meron kang bodily movement or you regret to do something, pwede kang maging liable in committing a certain crime. Much time and money could be saved if only policymakers had a thorough understanding of criminological theory. A crime is a crime because the law says so. Hindi po magiging kriminal or magiging crime ang isang action kung wala namang law, wala namang basis, or wala namang batas na nagsasabi that that is a crime. Okay, criminological theories are primarily concerned with etiology, o yung basihan, yung origin. Ano ba dahilan? But occasionally, you have important things to say about actors in the criminal justice system, such as police, lawyers, correctional, or jail officers and victims. So, ito yung mga taong involved. 22 theories will be discussed for better understanding on crime etiology other than major propositions presented by the different personas from the different schools of criminology. So, 22 theories. Good luck. Okay, number one. Demonological theory. Ano daw ibig sabihin ng demonological? People believe, okay, balikan natin yung old times or history. At sa demonological daw, eto naman, sinasabi dito is, ang tao daw na nag-commit ng crime are believed to be possessed by demons. So, yun yung paniniwala nila before. Na kapag ang tao daw nalaman nila na nag-commit ng crime, isa lang pinaniwalaan nila siya ay under the influence or possessed by demon. Okay? Kaya from the word demonological. Number two, the enemy. Ito na yung sinasabi natin kanina. Although na-discuss na to yung tinatawag natin social norms. Okay? Enemy. Magiging magulo ang isang community kung walang social or norms na sinusundan or standard values or values ang mga tao. So, they should have um, guidelines or set of guidelines na susundin ng mga tao para well arrange ang conduct ng mga tao. Okay. Next is the psychoanalytical theory. Okay. So, I don't know if you can still remember this one. This was proposed by Sigmund Freud. Balikan natin ha. Um, sa demonological, walang specific na founder kasi ito yung mga um, paniniwala ng mga old ones before. Dito naman sa ano, may this was proposed by David Emil Durkheim. Now, dito naman sa number 3, the psychoanalytical theory advocated by Sigmund Freud. I don't know kung natatandaan niyo yung the hierarchy, yung id ego and super ego. Okay. So, Psychoanalytical theory, kung natatandaan nyo yung conscience, the pleasure, and yung um, the triangle of our um, realization, this was proposed by Sigmund Freud. Number four, the human ecology theory. <coughs> human ecology, this theory is advocated by Robert Erzapak. Park is a strong advocate of the scientific method. Human ecology is a study of interrelationship of people and their environment. So, kung, kung titignan natin sa human ecology theory, ito yung pag-aaral na kung saan ini-involve or ini-incorporate natin yung relasyon ng tao at ng kanilang environment. Kaya kung mapapansin ninyo, bakit ba may mga certain places dito sa ating bansa na mataas ang crime rate at merong mga lugar na hindi naman ganun kataas ang crime rate? Kasi, one of the reasons daw or basis kung bakit mataas ang crime rate ng isang bansa na maraming tao or isang lugar na maraming tao because of their relationship. Kasi sa sobrang dami nila, sa sobrang dami ng tao, nagkakaroon ng conflict. Mabilis mag-init ang mga ulo kasi nga, nasiksikan. Okay? Next na number five, the somatotyping theory proposes or proposed by William Sheldon. 
na kung saan na pinag-uusapan dito is survival of the fittest. Okay? I don't know kung narinig nyo na yan. Survival of the fittest meaning ang mga tao is nagsisikap or dahil para lang mabuhay, nagkakaroon ng um, competition. Okay? Yung tinatawag nating survivor or who is the best among the rest. Okay? Dito naman, um, balikan natin si Sumatotyping according to Sheldon, okay? Yung kaniyang Sumatotyping, typing from the word typing itself, nagkakaroon ng ng classification yung kaniyang um ang tao based dun sa kaniyang criteria. So according to body physics by Sheldon, Okay, so dito naman sa classification of body physics by Sheldon, kinaklasify dito yung klase ng pangangatawan ng tao. So number one, we have endomorphy. Ano klase ng, ano klase ng katawan yung tinutukoy sa endomorph? A type of, with relatively predominance of soft roundness throughout or throughout the regions of the body. They have low specific gravity persons with typically relaxed and comfortable disposition. So, ito yung mga bilugan. Okay? So, mean, medyo chubs. Dito naman sa mesomorph, athletic type, predominance of muscle, bone, and connective tissues, normally heavy, hard, and firm. So, sa madaling, sang, sa madaling salita, from the word athletic, ibig sabihin, sila yung mga um, siksik yung katawan. Ibig sabihin, talagang um, banat na banat. For the ectomorph, then, thin, physic, flat chest, delicacy through body, slender, poorly muscled, they tend to look more fatig and withdrawn. Mas mga lousy or mas mga maninipis. So again, we have endomorph, the mesomorph, and the ectomorph. So ayun yung classification ng katawan or body physics by William Sheldon. Okay. For um, this one naman, according to Kretschmer, or um, Ernest Kretschmer, ito naman yung kanyang classification of body physics or somatotyping theory. Inibal niya lang ng terms, okay? The asthenic, the athletic, and the technic. Pero ito sa asthenic, um, lean, slightly built, narrow shoulders. So, ito yung mga maninipis or mga payat. Athletic, okay? Medium to tall. So, yun yung classification kanina sa mesomorph. Sa picnic naman, medium height, rounded figure, ito naman yung sa um, endomorph. Okay, so halos paras lang sila ng idea ni William Sheldon or si Ernest Kretschmer. Yun nga lang, magkaiba sila ng terms na ginamit. Okay? For number six, the differential association theory or the DAT, which was proposed by Edwin Sutherland which maintain that the society is composed of different group of organization. Iba't iba klase naman talaga ng grupo meron ang isang community. Okay? Ngayon, because of that, because of their difference, nagkakaroon ng problema or nagkakaroon ng crime because of the differences ng iba't ibang klase ng grupo. Differential association theory states that criminal behavior is learned behavior and learned via social interaction with others. So again, dito sa DAT or the Differential Association Theory, sinasabi lang dito, based doon sa idea ni Edwin Sutherland, that people are used or people commit crimes because yun yung kanilang na natututunan, nakikita, na-adapt because of the, the relationship between one man to the other or because of the social interaction because we socialize with one another. Okay. Continuation, Sutherland has been referred to as the most important criminologist of the 20th century kasi yung idea ni Edwin, okay, ni Sutherland. So, isa siya sa mga tao na may naiambag sa pag-aaral ng criminology. Because this explanation about crime and criminal behavior can be seen as a corrected extension of social perspective. Kasi nga, magkakaiba ng pananaw ang bawat isa. Then therefore, he was titled as the Dean of Modern Criminology. Okay, baka mali to, ha? Si Edwin Sutherland was known as the Dean of Modern Criminology. Cesar Lombroso was the father of modern criminology. Okay? Okay, the containment theory. Ano naman si containment? 
from the word contain or nakokontrol, which suggests that a series of both internal and external factors contribute to criminal behavior. Ano yung mga internal at external? Internal, personally, ikaw. External, yung mga iba't ibang klase ng pwedeng mag or mag magkaroon ng um, epekto sa mga desisyon mo sa buhay. Okay? Now, because of that, you have to, to, to control yourself. Okay? Dapat kaya mo i-overcome sa sarili mo. Kapag hindi mo nagawa yun, that will lead you to the commission of crime. Next is the social class conflict of capitalism theory. Social class conflict. Okay. According to Karl Marx, Frederick Engel, and Willem Bunger, okay, from the word social class, ano ba yung classes, or ano ba yung iba't ba klase ng, kla, ng social classes na meron tayo? Yung, di ba, na-identify natin yung mahirap, mayaman, katamtaman. Okay? So, because of this, nagkakaroon ng conflict base sa um, yung tinatawag nating pamumuhay ng tao. Okay. Continuation, Marxist social... Um, William Barger is a Marxist socialist, socialist. On the other hand, place more emphasis on working about crimes of economic gain. He believed that profit motive of capitalism generates an egoistic personality. Hence, crime is an inevitable outcome. So, ito na. Yung sinasabi natin na yung conflict between sa idea or the perspective of one another and people commit crime because nagkakaroon ng gain. Okay, meron ka napapala. Pwedeng pera, favor, profit, yung mga ganun. Okay, number nine, the strain theory. He is the premier sociologist of the modern days who after Darkheim also related the crime problem to anime. Okay, strain. It maintains that the failure of man to achieve a higher status of life causes them to commit crimes in order for that status or goal to be attained. Sa strain, it is somehow paras lang siya doon sa um, control. Okay? Si strain kasi, pag hindi ito, ito yung sinasabi natin, if a person is frustrated or upset, devastated sa buhay, again, pag hindi niya na-overcome yun, that will lead him or her in the commission of a crime. So, ang daming factor based dun sa mga theory at tinitingnan natin. Ang daming pwedeng maging rason or dahilan kung ang tao, paano ang tao nagiging kriminal. Okay. Subculture theory. Okay? Subculture. So, ito na yung galing ka sa kultura ng ganito, pumunta ka sa ganito, daladala mo yung kultura mo, nagkakaroon ng conflict. Or, yun yung mga... Um, liberated places na may mga tao, di ba kung, kung mapapansin niyo sa social media, may mga nag-viral na mga um, racist. Kasi yung kultura nila, hindi nagkakaroon ng acceptance or iba-iba na nagkakaroon, nagkakaroon ng conflict or contradiction sa paniniwala. Okay, number 11, the neutralization theory by Grisman Sykes. Okay, the theory maintains that an individual obey or disobey societal rules depending upon his or her ability to rationalize whether he is protected from hurt or destruction. Neutral. Okay? Yun yung mga tao na, alam nyo yun, nasa tamang pag-iisip ka, pero kapag ka nasaktan, na-depress, nagkaroon ng destruction sa buhay, hindi na nila kayang i-tingnan yung, hindi na nila kayang i-visualize yung sarili nila na ganito, ganito, ganyan. Kasi nga, they are, um, distracted kung ano yung nangyayari sa kanila. Okay. The differential opportunity theory. So, dito naman claim that there is differential opportunity or access to success goals by both legitimate and illegitimate mean, means depending on the specific location of the individual within the social structure. Thus, lower class groups are provided with greater opportunities for the acquisition of deviant acts. So, differential opportunity theory. Differential, pagkakaiba. Okay? So, ito naman yung sa tinatawag natin na leads the lower class to want things and society does things to people. So, ito yung, alam niyo yun yung problema ng mga mahihirap. Tayo, we are after with opportunity kung, kailan ta, kung saan tayo mapa, ma, mapapaganda, mapapaganda ang buhay. Yun yung ina-after natin na opportunity para matulungan natin yung mga sarili natin. Pero, nagkakaroon ng conflict kasi nga, iba't iba ng klase ng antas ng lipunan meron tayo. Okay? Now, 
let's proceed with the number 13. Okay, or kung ang number 13 natin na theory, the labeling theory. Ito naman pinaka-common. Okay, sa labeling theory kasi, the theory that explains about social reaction to behavior. It is, so ito, ang pinaka-concern naman natin dito is the community, the society. How do we react? How do we label certain people or incidents na tayo nagbabrand? Okay? So, the theory maintains that the original cause of crime cannot be known. No behavior is intrinsically criminal and behavior becomes criminal if it is labeled as such. May mga bagay naman na hindi naman talaga dapat masama tingnan or masama. Pero because of the way we brand, the way we label them, nagiging masama or nagiging mali. Okay? Next is the rational choice. So, from the word rational, okay? Ito yung sinasabi natin na sa tamang. Okay, so again, sa rational choice theory, dito natin pinapasok yung nasa tamang pag-iisip. Okay? Na we are in a good state of mind. Nasa tamang wisho ka, nasa tamang pag-iisip ka. Kahit pa sabihin natin na nakapag-commit ka ng crime by accident or what, nasa tamang pag-iisip ka. Ibig sabihin, na pag-isipan mong mabuti yung crime. Okay? Or alam mo yung tama at mali. Okay? Next is the instrumentalist theory. So, um, Earl Richard Kinney is a Marxist criminologist who advocate the instrumentalist theory. If capitalist rule, he argued that the state exists as a device for controlling the exploited class, the class that labors for the benefit of the ruling class. He claims that upper class create laws that protect their interests and at the same time, the unwanted behavior of all other members of the society. So, ito naman yung parang nagiging mapagsamantala. Yung mga nasa higher class or upper socioeconomic people, since may influensya sila, nagagawa nilang gumawa ng policy or guidelines in favor to them. So, they use their state, their, their status in life as their way of protecting their or themselves. Next, the social control theory. Okay, social control theory or the social bonding theory as represented the work of Travis Hirsch. It fits into the positivist school, neoclassical, and later right realism. It proposes that exploiting the process of socialization and social learning builds self-control. So, eto naman, ang pinaka-bottom line lang dito is the different individual or different group of people has its own control. Ibig sabihin, yung, yung capacity mo or klase ng pangangatawan or pag-iisip mo, yun yung pinaka ground or foundation mo sa pagkakaroon ng commission of crime. Okay. Moving on. Next slide. The four types of control, the direct, indirect, internal, control through need satisfaction. So, ito yung under ng social control um, theory. Direct, by which punishment is threatened or applied for wrongful behavior. Direct pang na na-experience, okay? So, indirect naman, by which a youth refrains from delinquency through the conscience or superego. So, ito naman, indirect tayo, ibig sabihin, di ba yung isabi ko nga kanina, the youth or the child, do not suffer directly kung ano yung kanilang punishment kasi nga hindi sila criminally liable. Sa internal, by identification with those who influence behavior say because his or her delinquent act might cause pain and disappointment to parents and at with whom he or she has close relationship. So again, ito na yung, dito na magmamatter yung mga isyo, emotional problems or factors. Control through need satisfaction. If all an individual needs are met, there is no point in criminal activity. Kasi nga naman, kung talagang napoprovide naman lahat, the, the emotion, the needs, there will be no crime committed. The social disorganization theory. Okay, so again, dito naman sa social disorganization theory from the word disorganization, nagkakaroon ng idea na magkakaroon talaga ng gulo if the country or the place or the society is so weak. Kasi magkakaroon ng grupo ng iba't ibang klase ng grupo ng aliansa. So, nagkakaroon ng conflict. Next, for the number, um, for the continuation of the social disorganization theory, social disorganization theory pioneered by Clifford Shaw 
and Henry Bakay suggested that this organized community characterized by poverty, population, ito na yung, dito na papasok yung sobrang hirap ng bansa o sobrang hirap ng community na yan kaya nagkakaroon ng disorganization kasi hindi sila nagkakaroon ng kasunduan o hindi nagkakaroon ng smooth um, communication or agreement yung isang grupo ng community. Next, the social learning theory. The social learning theory, okay, ito na yung sinasabi natin na natututunan ng mga tao yung crime because of the members of the society. Okay, kasi again, crime or the crime the, the crime is being learned. Next, for number 19, theory of evolution, he claimed that humans like other animals are parasites. Man is an organism having an animalistic intuition. Or tayo kasi daw mga tao is meron din tayong instinct kagaya ng mga hayop or animals na if we know that we are in danger, we used to protect or protect ourselves. Okay, or yung mga loved ones natin. Next, Charles Goring's theory. So, ito naman, ang sinasabi naman dito sa theory niya, no, ni Goring, um, he contradicted the Lombroso idea that criminality can be seen through features alone. Nevertheless, Goring accepted that criminals are physically inferior to normal individuals. In the sense that criminals tend to be shorter and have less weight than non-criminals. So, dito naman sa Charles Goring, pinag-usapan dito is nagka, meron daw identity, meron daw sariling identity yung mga criminals versus the non-criminals. Next, Ernest Hutton's theory. Tall, thin men, undersized men, are thieves and burglars. So, eto, halos paras lang siya ng samatotyping. Okay, na merong classification, yung klase ng katawan. The cartography, according to Adolf Petalet, um, dito naman, um, he emphasizes on social statistics. He discovered, basing on his research, that crimes against persons increase during summer and crimes against property tends to increase during winter. So, ito naman ang, ang idea nyo naman dito is about sa weather. Na kapag ka mainit daw or tag-init, mas madalas daw na crime na nakokomit ay about um, physical or crimes against person. Pag taglamig naman daw, mas madalas lang na nakukumit na crime is crimes against property. So, yun yung 22 theories na pinag-usapan natin or the, what we call, causes of crime. Okay? Mga teorya daw kung bakit nagkakaroon ng commission of crime. Okay? So, again, we, we were able to discuss about the different schools of thought in criminology. We have the um, classical, neoclassical, the positivist, and the Chicago School of Thought. Take note everyone na meron tayong iba't ibang klase ng personalities na nabanggit wherein they are the pioneer or the, the one who develop or propose or founder ng ganung klase ng idea. So, I hope you have, you, you will find time na isa-isahin yung kanilang mga um, highlights or idea. For example, si Sigmund Freud, si Edwin Sutherland, ano yung kanilang mga highlights of ideas. Okay? So, I hope mag-take, nakapag-take down notes kayo para we can, you can answer as much as possible during the surprise presentation. So, again, it is important that you take down notes on yung pinaka-importanting parte ng ating pinag -tay.